Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another HP oscilloscope. This one is a little bit special. This oscilloscope is called 181A. It is tiny, tiny, tiny right there. But this oscilloscope uses a very, very special storage tube. So it's analog storage and it can storage from a few hundred milliseconds and all the way to, to minutes using some flooding cathodes uh, built into the um, scope. So it stores the image on the screen and the activated pixels on the screen just keep sucking in electrons and they keep being um, lit uh, by this uh, persistence and uh, flooding um, electron cannons and this super super special um, tube. Tektronics also use the simil a similar um, tube in some of their analog uh, storage scopes. So and it's a plug-in scope so down here we got a plug-in module it's actually two different plug-in modules so i got a four channel plug-in and a time base and the four channel plug-in is called 1804a so it's a four channel 50 megahertz plug-in and then i got the time base it's called 1920c it is of course matching the frequency range of the inputs as you will notice the the knobs looks a little bit Philips like they don't really look like HP so it's a little bit interesting to see this uh, a little bit modern design style change uh, also I I noticed another little funny feature here on this uh, scope here it's here on the side like that flippity flop and we got two of these those are for probes so you can take your oscilloscope probe and hang it here somehow obviously this is not uh, the correct probe but if you had the correct probe you could maybe like, just click it in or somehow clickety clickety hold it i don't know exactly how <laughs> sorry about that totally stupid but that is the idea scope holders and the i think yes the releases you pull this up and then out comes come on man yeah here we go so here's the handle then you grab this handle and then you can pull out the plug-in so yes um, this plug-in consists of actually two modules and you can of course separate those two modules We've got a connector here between the two modules and here is the mechanical interlock between the two modules the time base is very very simple there's not a lot of stuff to say about this uh, time base really it consists of 90 percent air we can have a look in here yeah quite compact with the switch pcbs and this way with the connectors for everything like that and it's clearly that they have learned a lot from previous designs full of wires and full of soldering full of all sorts of manual work and that is more or less almost done now it's just click 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 screw this 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 then we're done super optimized for the modern production we got a lot of different um, switches here for our different uh, trick and sweep kind of stuff we're of course going to play a little bit with the different sweep and stuff like that so there's an interconnect between the trigger module or the time base 
of course. And that will be the vertical input module, the four channel input. And the, then look at the, the channel boards. Very, very compact design. Balanced uh, transistors in a little thermal. And here we go. Can look a little bit more. So, well, it's the four channels. And down here we see um, some different diodes and stuff like that. That is, of course, for the chop. Because this system can do, yeah, four to one chop. And that is done by all those diodes here. The chop shop. And this is the, of course, the input attenuators with trimming see a lot of trimming capacitors over all the resistors for speed optimization because remember this one goes to 50 megahertz so i really hope it works and there's another super nice feature here so this is of course the vertical deflection output that goes to the crt but of course they don't want this to go via a back panel uh, connector for all the slow stuff and power and whatnot okay we can go on the on the back panel here but no no here we go high speed interconnects so the connector slides in here and then it goes on each side of the deflection output and deflection transistors by the way you see we got four transistors down there and they're cooled Down here on, on this aluminium. I don't know if it's easy to see how this is done. And I'm a little bit skeptical about if there is a delay line or not, because what is this unit doing down here? Is this the delay line or is there no delay line? Because so far I haven't found it. Of course, it's easy to see when we power this up if there is any if it works well let's look inside the scope so i took off all the covers on this really nice oscilloscope and let's have a little look this is the horizontal deflection amplifier board and here we got the deflection transistors about here and here That'll be the output for the deflection plates in the CRT. I think this is just some, what is it, say, is it saying here? Oh, this is just some power supply support stuff. Not that interesting at all. And here is the output I mentioned about in the center of this deflection board. Horizontal deflection just goes here directly to the CRT. The power supply is a also a module uh, with connectors here at the back. So it's actually possible, quite easy, to pull out the power supply and replace the whole unit. And that is the module connector for the plug-in modules. We've got, of course, shielded cables for all the fast stuff. And here is the slide-in connector right there for the vertical deflection. So I think this little tiny piece here looks a little bit interesting. I think it could actually be a delay line. It is looking a little bit special. But how can you make a delay line this short? Maybe it is very, very special, but we can't pull this apart and really figure this out but that is definitely how it works we got quite a lot of connections for this uh, CRT and that is because the CRT is very very special also the, look at the look how deep this scope is it's a half a meter or something like that and the scope goes all the way to the very very back 
And this is the top left side where we find storage control. And here is something important if you're ever going to service a unit like this. That is this special flat cable. This goes to all the front anode and, and uh, storage terminals of the scope or the CRT. So that is some thin plastic flexible stuff and it is uh, yeah insanely fragile so be very very careful if you ever you need to take out this scope so there's uh, actually a cable attached to the front of uh, of the CRT and there's actually a connector in here and the red wire and the thin wires here that is a high voltage for storage. I think it's about seven kilovolts uh, used for uh, the the maintain of the the stored uh, picture. And the 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 control voltage here that's not that high, and it goes to this storage control board. Here is the high voltage supply, and uh, I see some nasty fungus, white nasty stuff on the capacitors and I think we need to clean this a little bit I tried to touch this with my fingers here and most of it goes off real easy so I think I got a good uh, chance to uh, to clean this up some uh, over voltage um, neon bulbs protection stuff how about we take off that uh, shield and have a look so now we're inside the shielded part of it there's a big, thick plastic case around this unit. And the transformer is again a very special wound type for low capacity, capacitance between the windings. So it can go real fast and good. And that will be the high voltage diode. And again, we see some nasty white stuff on the capacitors. But here is the resistor that is exactly this type of resistor and it is also 29 mega ohm I had a lot of fungus problems with exactly this type of resistor in the previous video I released so uh, go and have a look at that one if you want to see some really really funny resistor fungus uh, super crap and down here is the high voltage tripler for the 7 kilovolts and it is in a, see you can see this, super transparent, oh a little bit rubber epoxy type. That is so beautiful, it, how can it be so transparent? Wow, that is nice. So I think I am ready to power this up, I've been inspecting everything. I've cleaned up all the nasty stuff here in the high voltage. I was actually in between here and fixed that as well, but I don't want to bend around those capacitors too much. So I did bend them so I could clean them. And they got a thin, thin layer of my magic high voltage stuff here. So they look nice and shiny. And... Uh, so happy about this one is nice but anyway yeah there was also a cable this is actually the mains cable for the on off switch and that was hanging all the way here so it was interfering with the plug-in module you can even see scratch marks on that cable so of course it's supposed to be out of the way you know this is the back of the module maybe maybe somebody was angry about this one or thrown it into a container or something like that but look at that it's also damaged here this one is bent this plate is quite a lot bent but i'll try and uh, play along with it uh, and then fix this uh, later we got a little bit of nice output here. delayed sweep output and Main sweep in the air, delayed in this and that. What is all that funny stuff? And then we of course got the the blanking. 
I am now ready to do the first power up. A hundred and thirty, hundred and twenty watts, hundred and seventeen. Let's just use the beam finder, right? This is intensity. Come on, man. 108 watts. I don't see any. This is the intensity. No luck. Uh, has it something to do with the trick? I don't know. Not my lucky day. This is a normal. Let's focus. No. Damn it. Let's start to investigate. I was playing around with this for about a minute and I can't touch this power supply. The two transistors on this side is just red glowing hot. And the other two in the other side is nice and cold. So we got a power supply issue. Why either a power supply issue or some other short something is using way too much or something like that. So I better have a look here. Yeah, we got a few shorted power supplies. And a lot of stuff gets real warm here. And half of it actually works. So what I got is plus 100 is working, plus 15, nope, plus 12, yes, and minus 100 is also not working. So that is interesting. So when you're looking at this uh, power supply schematic, and you're having a problem um, with a power supply and both of these are actually very close to zero volts like a half a volt or something like that right so this is a positive 15 volts and we got almost nothing out and uh, that transistor is red uh, glowing hot and of course a lot of current goes this way and this way this transistor is completely overdriven and there's probably something wrong here but there's actually a, a little bit of a problem with this design. The individual uh, power supplies, they're not really that individual. So you see the negative uh, 100 is, is also connected to here, to the reference or to the feedback of this one. So this is maybe why both of these don't work. But since both of their outputs uh, is like really low, here is a trick I will uh, show you how to do this real, real fast and real easy. I am totally cheating. This is, of course, my thermal camera. And as you see here, everything is cold. I just let it cool down. So what I got here is a power supply with only one volt and a lot of amps. So this power supply is able to do quite a lot of amps, right? So with only one volt, you know, delivered backwards, of course, it should be able to handle that right and as you hear here the power supply is uh, complaining about a short so please try not to mind that sound too much what is happening here is one component gets hot and I'm only putting in two watts look at that so that is this capacitor here that gets warm real fast and this is across the output that capacitor is shorted and that is why the 15 volt is uh, overloaded easy peasy so with the capacitor changed to a new capacitor we got a nice beautiful picture on this scope so here I'm just testing with my little XY signal tester. I'm using the, 
this uh, input here is an external input that can be used for the horizontal. And uh, we are now in a right mode. We've got a little bit of uh, issues with the switches here. As you see here, when I move the input, there's a very, very long afterglow or like storage kind of mode. And I can change it to even longer storage like this. And see if I move it, the input, see, like that. Super long storage. That is really funny. And you can erase it like this and uh, restart. You can also go in maximum write mode or in view mode. So in view mode, it's completely stopped. See if I remove the input, we, we are now just viewing whatever we, are, we, we stored. And it will stay like this for many, many minutes. And it's all analog. I'm really impressed how well this uh, storage works. And it's actually quite uh, sharp and clear and all that. So we can go back to uh, normal mode. I'm having a little bit problem with normal mode here to get out of. St so here we go. Ah, annoying. Yeah, here we go. Now it's working. So this is normal mode. And then all I have to do is add a little bit more brightness. So now you can see it's uh, probably blinking a little bit here on the video. This is because now we are running on super fast uh, updates. We're not using uh, the storage module. What we can do now is go out of X, Y mode like this. So now we are in normal scope mode. As you see here, now we have channel one. Let me dial down that channel just so you can see. We got a channel like that, right? So, and if I take it even further down and trick, trick, here we go. So this is one channel mode, but if I, uh, the, the four inputs, they start all with off. And this is the way you turn on the different channels. So this is channel one and this is channel two. This is what I've enabled at the moment. I can just enable one more and one more. Then I can dial them up and down like that. And then I can do alternating or chop modes and all that kind of stuff that is completely normal. Also crank up some more intensity. So all in all, a super, super nice uh, oscilloscope, really, that can do all sorts of cool things. It's a little bit weird with the with the way that it's triggering and to select the different channels it's triggering. And I think this is this is how that works because it only works in A and it's only A. I got some input. Oh, we can put here. We can take this input and put it in C and then we'll probably prove that here because I'm not uh, running in normal mode. Uh, I'm not running in auto mode. So that means if I don't have a trigger signal, then I don't see anything, right? And again, on channel C, I got some signal. So yes, definitely that seems to be working. So if you got a signal like this, that is really blinky blinky, all you have to do is go into the right mode. And then look at that. Now we're running in storage and we can also just select how much energy we want to add to the storage and crank it out like this and rem see how nice and stable it is now. And this is the picture that was blinking and was super, super annoying before. Now it's just super nice and stable. See if I, if I move the signal up and down here, you can see it takes a few seconds and then it should be back. <laughs> you can even see the old start here. And this is because I'm probably running way too close max. If we go to view mode like this, 
storage mode. So let's try my one microsecond pulse in one channel mode, of course. See, here is the time base 500 uh, nanoseconds per division. So two divisions is one microsecond, and that is exactly what we got. And see that? We even got the leading edge. So that is a good sign. That definitely means we got a delay line in the vertical. So that is the thing that I was uh, that I found this uh, nice thick cable. That is definitely a delay line. And let's zoom in a little bit. So that is 50 nanoseconds per division. And that is how much delay there is in the delay line. So that is really nice. And we can also, here's the magnifier for the horizontal. So let's go back and show you guys how that works. Times five. And then you need the position here. So we've got a huge zoom. So there's a fine zoom, but there's also this. I think that should work too, right? No. Here we go. Okay. So let's try and see the bandwidth of this uh, scope. Only one channel, of course. And this is a one megahertz uh, reference. Let's just see how much that is, right? So let's crank it up to 10 megahertz. Nice and sharp picture like that. So that was 10. It should be able to do 50, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then, of course, we need to play a little bit with the trigger. So that is 50. And that is the dotted line right here. So that is minus 3 dB, 3 dB point. So yes, the bandwidth is correct. And that is the 50 megahertz. And look at that. If I zoom in like this now we've got your 50 megahertz with a very nice resolution and let's try and crank this up a little bit more 60 70 80 90 100 and you can easily you can even measure the time here how accurate that is it is still look at that spot on the grid at 100 megahertz. <laughs> How cool is that? This is a 0 0.2 hertz uh, sine wave, and I'm not even close to the slowest speed this one can do. Let's try and play a little bit. So here's a little bit of glow. How beautiful is that? Ooh, we got a little bit of trigger problems. But I think you got the point, right? I thought it was normal mode, right? Oh, I can't be bothered. That's going to take a half an hour to figure out. But yeah, it is a lot of fun to play with this... Uh, Analog storage is, is definitely beautiful. I have to find the exact point of how this. See, now we're running in a very, very long storage time. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will call this the end of this video. Hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.